I used to think that coding was all about writing lines of code until I realized that I was missing something critical. Becoming a great software engineer is about mastering some of the key skills that most people often overlook. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through the five key skills and qualities that I've noticed that the top engineers and coders have. And this brings me to my first point, and that is that some of the top performing engineers have an inquisitive mindset. And that just translates to that they have this willingness to learn. And think about it, some of the top engineers always start by asking questions. They question everything. They're constantly thinking about how do things work? Why do they work the way they do? How were they built? And I'm gonna use myself as an example. I mean, I don't wanna necessarily say I'm a top coder, but I'm gonna use myself because I find myself having this inquisitive mindset and wanting to know how things work. And some of the people that I work with are constantly questioning why. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. I remember when I was first learning about how browsers worked and how the internet worked, especially when I was younger, this was when I was at least like 14 or 15, I used to question, okay, how is it that my browser knows how to fetch this website? I almost found it amazing and why this happened. And at the time YouTube was, I don't even know if it was a thing or if it was even out, but you know, I had to dig in and do some research until I started learning about how routers worked. I started learning how DNS worked. And of course I'm oversimplifying, but I'm just trying to make the point here that this inquisitive mindset, just trying to learn and trying to deep dive into things, it's what's, is what makes the top performing engineers so inquisitive. So I'm gonna give you another example of some of the qualities that I've noticed, and that is when it comes to coding, we could come up with multiple solutions to a problem. And I've noticed that the top engineers tend to really try to assess all different kinds of solutions before they commit to one. And typically you'll see this when you're doing some bleak code or you're doing some sort of problem for school, you'll come up with some sort of naive solution and then there's maybe one or two other solutions that are a bit more optimal. So this applies to coding as it does with life, but just having that capacity to be curious and to constantly keep asking why and to learn is something that some of the top engineers possess. And the third thing I want to mention that's in line with this is that if you continually ask yourself questions like, why are things built this way, then you're going to want to learn new technologies. And for example, the advent of like OpenAI and all these other AI companies that are coming and they're giving us these APIs that we can use, you know, being curious and wanting to understand how these different things work makes you even a better engineer because you're learning different technologies. And, you know, we can apply this even if we're trying to build something in school, we're building some project at work and some new test tech stack arises. So for example, when Next.js became pretty popular, that was something else that was like, okay, let's learn this new technology and see how we can apply it to some of the projects we're working on. So I think having that curiosity, being able and willing to learn something new is what will make you stand out. But I do also want to say that curiosity alone isn't enough and having a strong foundation is very critical to being a top performing engineer. So that takes us to the next point, which is that all top performing engineers have very good fundamentals. And when I'm saying that they have good and strong fundamentals, I'm referring to things like they know their data structures, they know their basic algorithms, they have very good design skills, and they build these fundamentals in order to be able to solve problems later on and build really scalable and really good solutions. So I'll give you a concrete example of that. And that is, I remember when I was in school, I focused very much on the syntax of the language because I just really couldn't grasp how the language was working instead of focusing on the fundamentals. And I think that had I focused on these fundamentals, this would have laid all the building blocks in order for me to solve solutions and be able to put my 
or at least write lines of code in order to build some cohesive solution. So one of the things that I want to point out about data structures and basic algorithms is that these top engineers have a very good grasp of how data structures work, how they're implemented. They understand how to build a complex system through some of the design problems that they've seen in the past. And this comes into practice when you're building large scale systems. I could even recall some examples at work where having these strong fundamentals and being able to build long term solutions come from having these fundamentals. So another concrete example is say, for example, you're building some sort of application that has some caching layer. And of course, there's a bunch of different technologies that you can use now. But say you were to implement some sort of caching layer on your own for your own application application, you may say, okay, you may start thinking of ways to design it and ways to do it. But if you know your data structures, you'd immediately, immediately just say like, okay, I know that I need to use some sort of dictionary here in order to have a, some sort of constant time lookup in order to make this thing more performant. So when I say, you know, focus on fundamentals, I'm referring to those fundamentals that you see in your textbooks, which is things like your data structures, your basic algorithms and like design skills, which are going to translate and allow you to multiply apply and 10x your skills. But here's the thing, and I know I'm going to contradict myself slightly. The just knowing the concepts and having the fundamentals isn't enough because I know that you need to put this into practice. And some of the top performing engineers have pretty strong coding skills. So this is where we get back to the previous point when I had mentioned that coding when I was focusing on the syntax when I was coding that was primarily not what I should have been focused on. I should have focused primarily on the data structures. However, I will say that coding is one of those key skills that top developers have, and it's that they're able to translate their thoughts and ideas into writing. And we do that through code. So coding skills, I would say that knowing when to create functions, also using descriptive variable names is all are all skills that these top engineers possess. And one of the things with coding that I will mention is that writing clean code is of the utmost importance because code is usually often more often read than it is written. And these top engineers know that you're writing code for at least the next two to five years and someone new is going to have to be able to pick up the code that you've written. So I'll, you know, for example, I challenge you to look at one of your old code bases or even an essay or something that you've written in the past and see if you can understand it now or try to give that piece of code or one of your old code bases or projects that you worked on and try to give it to someone else and see if they can decipher what's going on. This is how you can improve the way you structure things and the way that you are articulating your ideas, of course, through through code, but this will translate and allow you to grow as a developer if you're able to write for the next person. Just remember, code is more often read than it is written. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But I do want to say that coding is not just a solo mission, although it is sometimes it's not a solo mission when you're working together in a group and when you're working in a company and key developers and the best engineers know that collaboration is just as important as coding. So this brings us to the next point, And that is that top developers have very good communication skills and work collaboratively with others. Some of the best performing engineers that I know are able to articulate their thoughts. They're able to distill very complex topics and make people like product managers or those that are just, you know, stakeholders in this project. They're able to very clearly articulate exactly what they're doing and they know the right level of detail depending on the audience that they're presenting to. So this is a very crucial skill that I urge you to to really try to grasp. So some of the questions that I see these top performing engineers ask is how can I translate this complex topic into more simple terms? How can I extract some of those key details that are required in order for me to articulate my ideas and make them such that someone that doesn't understand technology just gets it. 
right? So these are some of the questions that they ask and they tailor the responses based on the audience that they're speaking to. And another question that they ask is, what's the best way to collaborate on this problem? So some projects span across multiple teams. They can span across different companies. You can have consultants working on different projects and being collaborative and being able to know how you can break up a software project, for example, or some problem into multiple different pieces is actually very important as in order to be in the top five or 10% of developers. And I'm gonna give you a concrete example of this. Say for example, we are building some sort of system at the company and we need some sort of customer relation management tool. So we decide to hire some consultants, some external consultants to come in, you know, build this system into the company. You know, how do we collaborate on this problem? And, you know, some of the top engineers, they're able to break the problem up right? Because now we're going to merge two tech stacks, you know, we're merging this tech stack that's coming externally. And now we have our own tech stack. And we need to be able to translate with each other, and as well as with the external team, and we need to be able to break up the project so we can understand how long it's going to take, and how we're going to integrate the two systems together. And you know, from my personal experience, this is, you know, kind of the problems that we run into and some of the solutions that we have to build and being able to collaborate and just, you know, just be able to break down projects into more manageable pieces. So, you know, doing some project management work, communicating, articulating, and making sure that those around you are aware of what work is being done and what their part is and piecing it all together just makes you super effective. And it makes you the almost like the the one that connects all the puzzle pieces together. Okay, okay. And here's the kicker. Even with great communication, being consistent and trusting the process is probably the most important part. And if there's one takeaway that you take away from this video is this, trust the process. Coding is hard. Being an engineer is hard. Being a problem solver is very difficult. It takes a very unique mindset in order to do that and trust the process. Trust that you will learn what you're doing as long as you're putting the hard work into it and that you're, you know, you're studying, you're you're being curious, you're you're kind of applying all the key skills that we mentioned before and just trust the process. At some point, things will click. And for example, when I was in school, I remember I was in my intro to Java class at NYU and the professor was teaching us about loops at the time and I was just so confused. I just couldn't grasp how the loop worked. It was a for loop at the time. And I'm like, how can you define? I was getting lost in the syntax of the language saying, how can you define, say, like an int within the loop and the parentheses? And I just couldn't really grasp that concept. And the reason why is because I was getting lost in the, of the detail instead of understanding the broader concepts. And it took me I would say a couple of weeks to really just stop doing that and just letting, letting, just trusting the process, just letting myself learn and be able to dive into different aspects of it. So for example, once I was able to get over that, at one point it just clicked. I don't, I don't know what happened. Maybe it's like, you know, I was too stressed out at the moment or something, but at some point things just started clicking. The loops made sense, variables made sense. I remember it was just like, like I was able to keep the concepts in my mind and trusting the process just really helped me do that. And I can even go back. So, you know, I've been in the field for now, what, a little over 10 years. And even, even when I first joined my first job, I was just so lost, you know, I was just like, oh, wow. Like I've never coded in a professional setting aside from internships and, you know, just diving into a professional setting and learning the way that things work and, and, and how code bases are created and how these large complex systems are put together really challenged me. And I knew, you know, I could have just quit right then and there and just said, you know, this is just difficult and this is a hard problem to solve. And 
you know, I'm never gonna get through it, you know, imposter syndrome kicks in and all that. And, you know, in the back of my mind, the one thing that I kept saying is just trust the process. It's gonna click, you know, I was able to get through school, I'm able to learn these things, I'm able to learn concepts outside of school and putting it all together allowed me to be successful in my job as well as in my personal projects. So I challenge you, if you're stuck right now, trust the process, sleep on it, take a break, go out for a walk, talk with your friends, just do something different, come back to it and things are gonna make sense. Okay, so now that you know what it takes, let me know if you're gonna try it. I'll catch you guys in the next one, peace.